What up, whiskey fans? Welcome to Boozy Sessions. I'm your host, George Schultz. This is the podcast where we talk anything and everything whiskey as we enjoy whiskey. In each episode, we will be interviewing, or I will be interviewing a special guest who will be drinking with me. Their whiskey will be delivered with the help of Boozy. So thank you, a huge thank you to Boozy. Boozy guarantees two-hour delivery in Metro Manila anytime between 9 a.m. to 12 midnight. Shipping is free for orders above 2,000 pesos, so get those big, big alcohol orders in. Not too big, you know, you don't want to drink too much, but get it in so you get that free delivery. They have the best selection of liquor you can find online, especially with whiskeys. Now, what I'm excited for is today's guest is someone you may know. I wouldn't be surprised if you do. He is an amazing singer, songwriter, producer, actor, and host, and is known as the king of R&B of the Philippines. Let's give it up for JR. Hey! Yeah, this is, a, this is our up? cue for applause, man. We put it in here. What's up, George? Good applause. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. I've been eyeing this bottle next to me for like a good 15 minutes ever since I sat down. Um, I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm excited to take you through it. I mean, this is just... I, I love this because it's just a great way to get to sit down, catch up, talk, and, you know, I mean, share a great bottle of whiskey, which I'll get to take you through the expression as well and take you through nice. the tasting notes. And- I've had some other whiskeys, and I've grown to like whiskey, but I'm excited to see the different ways of uh, taking the whiskey in the right way, right? Yeah, There's yeah, like- absolutely his notes and we have like an exciting whiskey that we will be going with today which is Shackleton and, and thank you for your beautiful setup you know I mean we I asked JR to be on the podcast and he immediately just said yes he's, he's, he's the best and he just comes out amazing setup thank you man I really appreciate course, it man. Thanks, so dude. what was your first drink how did you enjoy it and are you a whiskey fan in general do you have you found yourself over the years developing a taste for whiskey growing up yeah, I'm a late bloomer. I nice. recently just developed the taste for it. But my first drink was tequila on my mom's birthday, was it? Yeah, my mom's birthday. Mm. It was tequila, and we got pretty nice that night. But <laughs> later on, for some reason, I just kind of gravitated towards whiskey. I like it. I like just like the boldness of it, of just, you don't have to mix it with anything. And it's sometimes go with ice, sometimes go without. You know, sometimes you can mix it if you're feeling it right. But I don't know. There's so many ways to take it in. That's why I kind of like fell in love with it, too. I, I love that, man. And, you know, it's it's something that especially um, with a lot of the whiskey drinkers that I've had conversations with, there's always this stigma attacked, attached to whiskey that's about like, what's the right way to drink your whiskey? Like, mm-hmm. um, do, do you drink it neat? Are you do you, do you have to drink it with ice? Is it disrespectful to mix it? With, with anything, and, <laughs> right, you know, I mean, there's also. always this this big stigma with the whiskey community about like what is the what is the right way to drink your whiskey, and the answer to that, as um, by my belief and a lot of the whiskey ex- experts that I've talked to from uh, straight up straight up from Scotland, dude, that I've talked to about it, is that there is no real right way to drink your whiskey. You just drink it however you want to enjoy it. Nice. You drink it however you like it. So with, with whiskey, I always tell everybody who I'm drinking with, go through it in this order. You take it neat first, and then you try it with a drop of water to open it up. And then you can try it with ice. And then at, just so you've really respected, you know, I mean, the process and gotten to try the whiskey and gotten that exact flavor profile that, that whoever's making the whiskey is coming up with. And then after that, step. maybe you can mix it up. You forgot one step. What's the step? They have to try it with gasoline. <laughs> with gasoline. With gasoline. Have you ever had a whiskey gasolina? <laughs> no, dude. I don't think I'd be alive if I had a whiskey gasoline. I would have taken, um, to those of you who are listening, um, JR is, he is one of the most badoy people I've ever met. <laughs> but in the best way. Like, I learned from you, George. It's JR humor, and it's amazing. <laughs> like, everybody everybody knows him and says, like, God, that was such a JR joke. <laughs> But JR, 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 that's how you, man. Mr. Wordplay. Yeah, the the wordplay is great. But I'll I'll try, dude. I'll I'll try a whiskey gasoline after this, <laughs> and then I'll let your fiance you. know that you gave me the idea, and we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. we'll see how that pans out. <laughs> 
Okay, so um, moving on from um, whiskey gasoline. Um, one of the points of this podcast also is we want to get to know you kind of unfiltered. So we will be going through a whiskey as we go through the podcast. So yeah. um, part of this is really just to teach you also like kind of how to go through it. But we're going to be having our whiskey. We're going to be seeing what we can mix it with. We're going to be making a drink, which is really, really amazing at this time. And it has some lore and legend behind it, um, which I'm going to get into. Let's start out with trying our Shackleton neat. Like I said, those those first steps that we're going to do. Actually, I have my bottle right here. And JR, you have your bottle right there, right? Yes, sir. It smells okay. really good off the, off the cork. Off the bat, man. Like, yeah, it has very, very sweet smell. And the reason for that is that it's a blended malt. So this has a huge blend of single malt whiskeys, mostly from the Highland region to really create that robust flavor profile. So you'll also find, apart from the sweetness, just a little bit a little bit of smoke as well, like right at the edge of it. But in general, Shackleton is like an amazing drink. It's very, very smooth. And one of the things that's great about it is because of that general sweet flavor profile, very, very mixable drink. And it's mm -hmm. very, very nice to put in with a couple of different things. Um, we're not going to try this tonight, but I've had this with Macchiato. And together I called it and coined it the Shakiato, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Stuff like that. Really cool ways to drink Shackleton. But we can start by giving it a pour. It smells good. If, if, you, have, if you have to go in an hour, then then let's let's get you drunk, dude. <laughs> so put a, put a generous pour if you want to, but you don't have to because we're eventually going to be... We're eventually going to be going through this no matter what we do. This is okay, Sha, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That looks good. That looks good. So let's try it. Left to right, very light. With whiskey, um, your first smell of whiskey, it's a lot like, it's like a getting to know you, you know I mean? It's saying hello. It's this very, very smooth, delicate process. And you don't want to, you don't want to go in too hard. This whiskeys are normally 40 to 50% ABV. So you don't want that hitting your nose too hard. You just very light. Left to right. Just process what you're smelling. And I immediately like it. it's very, very sweet. So um, off the bat on the nose, you already have this amazing coffee, apple, cinnamon, and ginger that you're getting. I feel, I feel a little buzzed from, from smelling it. Just the smell, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think on the nose, man? How are you liking it? I like it. I don't, it, it smells expensive. <laughs> it smells expensive. I love that. More specifically, it smells like a green apple. Nice. Nice. If, is that what you're getting? I'm getting a green. So now that we've done that, we've prepared our palate for what we're going to taste. Nosing is, it's, it's half of it because you really, your palate has to kind of process it and be like, okay, that's what just happened. Now we're going to taste it and we're going to go through that together. And the palate and the nose are going to work together to really give you the full expression. So what people do on their first try is they're nor they'll normally just sip and they'll just glug it down. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to just get around half a mouthful and hold it and swirl it in your mouth almost like you're gargling for around maybe se five to seven seconds. We'll go with five seconds to be a little bit speedier on it. But if you can go seven, go seven. So let's get our half a mouthful and together. Cheers. Cheers. And then we swallow. So now off the bat, you already notice the spice. Immediately the spice hits. Yes. But what happens is now that the alcohol and the expression of the alcohol is all over our palate, the, the swallow in itself was actually much, much smoother. So now we're actually getting to experience the expression that's left behind after the swallow. We're getting to experience the expression that's there around the mouth over the pal over the tongue, under the tongue, all over the palate, and we get to really taste that. And immediately what comes across is again that that beautiful beautiful, beautiful range of they have actually very nice fruit notes on this. This is um it has glazed pineapple, glazed mango on on the on the palate. We have immediately the toffee that that comes from just those that blend of Highland malts. And on top of that, it finishes off with some bonfire smoke, which is what kind of like just puts that light smoky note on it. How do you like it? I, like, I kind of like this technique because you can start this off in the beginning of the night. 
like if you're in a bar or something, you get some whiskey and then you do yeah. this little swirl in your mouth, right? And with that spice, with the Shackleton, when you swallow it, you swallow all your bad breath away. So you're good for the whole night. You're good. You're good. You know, like when you talk to people, you're you're gonna have nice Shackleton breath. You know, Shackleton I'm gonna do it breath. again. I'm you know what? Again. Um, let's tell our marketing team that that's how we should market this. Um, get that Shackleton breath <sighs> and give you the royal. Yeah, with that, we'll record that. We'll take that and be like, get that Shackleton breath on your night, night out. Night. Start your night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, you went in and I was so sure that you were going to talk about like, yeah, this is such a great way to start. It's a good starting whiskey. It's a blended malt. It's not as expensive. And, you know, you get to work your way up. No, you come in and say, this is a great way to start because it, it takes the away breath breath. Breath. But you know what, dude? JR, you're not wrong, bro. It, it, that, you're absolutely right. It, it kind of does, doesn't it? And I wish right? we, we were close enough to test that out and exchange <laughs> breaths. But I mean, we won't. Um, ask ask Mika later. Ask Mika if your breath <laughs> is not nice. Start your night My with Shackleton nice. breath. <sighs> That's so. Yeah. Now that now that you've gone through, but seriously, how how do you like the flavor profile? I liked it. I like swirling it. It kind of um, mellows it out when you swallow. Absolutely. Yeah. And now that you've done that, um, Shackleton's very unique in that um, maybe this is something you can try later. But um, one of the things I love about this drink is that, especially for the Philippine market, it's actually developed and designed to be drank with ice. Like um, the maker of Shackleton would argue that the best serve of Shackleton is over ice. Just because of the story, I won't get into the story, but the story involves Ernest Shackleton and how he, a famous whiskey that he left behind that got frozen in ice and was discovered 100 years later. Oh my gosh. So it was discovered in Antarctica 100 years later. So because of that, they made this expression to be drank with ice as its best serve. So, you know, I mean, that bottle's yours. So anytime after Ooh. after this, if ever you just want a whiskey, now that you've tried it neat, um, next you could just try it with a with a pop of water just to open it up and then do okay. that same thing, nose and then swirl and see how you like that. And then for the last bit, you try it with a rock of ice and see how okay. that opens it up as well. Because the water and the ice, they really mellow the whiskey out, right? I mean, it's, it, it, it with anything, um, diluting anything in water will kind of really give it that mellow. That's what we're doing, right? A drop of water? Um, well, uh, we're actually gonna be going into one of the things I love the most about Shackleton in general. Okay. Um, Shackleton is, it's just, because of its flavor profile, because of those sweet notes that it has, it's actually very, very mixable. So next we're gonna go into making that beautiful, beautiful hot toddy that I told you about. Ooh, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, hot toddy has a lot of lore behind it. It's essentially an immune booster. It's meant to keep your immune system up during, during the rainy it. season. And it's also quite good for your voice. We have lemon and honey in it as well. So we prepared this specially for the the singer that is JR. And we, or, so we wanted you to make we wanted to make sure you enjoyed something and that it, it actually like related to you as well. So the hot toddy is actually really cool. And especially right now with the situation going on, there's no scientific proof. You know, I mean, these are all just this is old school marketing. This is back in the day, like hundreds of years ago where doctors would say whiskey is good for for your immune system you know i mean those those are back in those days so when we look at the hot toddy that was that was like this formation of this like mix of great things for your throat to really keep your throat and voice and immune system healthy so the hot toddy is like that perfect blend of that so um just to explain to everybody who's listening in the hot toddy is very very simple drink to make it's essentially just your choice of whiskey some hot water, some lemon, and honey. And just a good mix of that to be able to create something. And JR and I will be making a hot toddy tonight. That sounded kind of wrong, didn't it? We're gonna be making a hot toddy. We're gonna make a hot toddy. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get your glass. The, the, you have a glass there? Yes, sir. You get your glass. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pour some hot water in the glass. That's gonna be around maybe half to three fourths of your glass will be with this hot water. So we can start with that. 
Oh, that's, that's some ASMR right there. <laughs> right there, we got the hot water. Next, we have just the lemon that we put in. We're going to put in, you know what, um, in general, like, you should try to, I'm not, uh, for those of you at home, I'm just going to show you that you can just squeeze a whole lemon in. I mean, uh, half a lemon in, um, but you don't, you don't need anything fancy. Just really juice that lemon over it. Really get as much of the juice as you can in it. Try and get the, that, that sound bite on there. Just really getting the lemon in there, getting the juice. Nice. <laughs> is, that, is that your lemon? <laughs> is that your lemon sound? It's my lemon, dude. You made a weird noise. I don't know what happened right now. <laughs> okay, next we can go with just a bit of honey. This is something that you do at your discretion. You know, I mean, um, in general, like I don't like too much honey in it, but just a little bit actually serves it really well. But if you like it a little bit sweeter, you can put a bit more honey in it. That's fine. I like that sweetness. And then you can just do your one shot of Shackleton. That should work out beautifully. Just a little bit. Love that. Right there on the sound. Just a little bit. Pour that in there. Wow, I like this podcast of yours, George. Oh, yes, sir. And we go in there, you just give that a swirl, give that a mix. And there you go, oh. JR. That's, that's essentially, that's your hot toddy. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, my friend. Now, that's, that's really awesome. I... I actually really quite mm. love that. Not the first hot toddy I've made. I've I've made quite a few, especially That's good. with everything happening now. I mean, there I, I always have a, a quite a bit of whiskey hanging about, and my 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 favorite personal brands I always just have hanging around. And whenever there's like a rainy day, and I just kind of need this like feel good pick me up, like the hot toddy is one of my go to home concoctions that I just love to make. It's perfect. It's raining right now. Is it raining over there? Yeah. Nice. How how is, how is it? How are you, like how are you it? Like, how do you like Shackleton Neat compared to Shackleton on uh, like mixed into this? What are what are your thoughts? Well, I can see myself also having something like this on a rainy day. Nice. But but if I just want to have that whiskey taste neat or with ice. Or or but, you know, I mean at night before you before you sleep and you instead of brushing your teeth, just Right, right. Yeah. For that that Shackleton breath, you can you can do yeah. that as well. We'll be fresh right after right after. But this <laughs> is nice though. I like this. Yeah, thanks, man. I mean, and that's well, it's not my concoction, but um, thank you for saying that because uh, it's a pleasure to share it with you. I it's mean, like a pick me upper. Yeah, absolutely. The next thing I'm gonna do, Jr. Is I'm just really gonna encourage you to like you know I mean let's let's just enjoy, kick back, have a good time, drink drink throughout the night. Now that now that we've made our drinks. There really is no limit to how much okay. of the bottle you want to finish tonight. Um, you, I, you can save some for later, but I'm just going to be drinking with you throughout the night as well. So cheers, man. Let's have a good evening and cheers. Good I'm rest of the done. podcast. Yeah, man. So, no. um, yeah, oh, sir. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, um, I just want everybody to get to know you a little bit. So I have some questions that oh. I, I want to ask. Okay. And of course, the the more I guess um, the more alcohol you have in your system while you answer these questions, the better. Oh. <laughs> but they're they're simple. I mean, simple enough. Um, <laughs> I just want to be able to see how you answer on the fly because Jr. is really really good on his feet. Okay, let's see about <laughs> I love, that. I love these like little promotions I do for you that aren't even that aren't even like wow yeah he's such a good producer. I'm just like Jr. Jr. is good. <laughs> Jr. is a funny guy. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we have a movie. It's coming up. Get excited for it. Um, it's we're in production right now. Jr. produced the film with me, but on top of that, he also wrote all the music for the film with hey. his wife. They wrote hey. the music together, and his wife is starring in the film. Which and I have a personal relationship with her because she's the sister of my girlfriend. And you're and starring in it also. I, well, I mean, I always take it as an opportunity to Matt Damon. And when you're producing something to write yourself your own role, I mean, that's, right. that's always a little bit of fun. 
but yeah, it's it's gonna be a great story and a great time. So when we do have it out, I really do hope all of you who are listening get excited about it and, and watch. We're gonna definitely try and see what we can do with it and see if we can bring it into hopefully a streaming service. Yeah. You. Yes. So you can watch. It's gonna so, be really cool. But yeah, apart from that, JR, amazing person to work with. I'm, I'm just just really my pleasure to have him on here with me tonight. He's thank he's you, George. He's such a homie. Thank you, George. Even though Cheers you say to you, that to George. to all your guests on the show, but thank you, George. I really appreciate that. You're so welcome. <laughs> okay, now for some questions, JR. How is it like being quarantined as a newlywed? Did you discover new things about yourself? And what were the biggest challenges about discovering this kind of married life together right as you hit like this? Okay, we have to basically get tied together for you know months on end how how was that transition like for you guys i think it was cool because it was kind of like a, a band-aid right where you just rip it off really quick so you don't feel any pain i feel like that's what happened to us a, a band-aid got ripped off really fast and then we just got into this quarantine where we have to be with each other and stay with each other 24 7. absolutely you know especially coming from a life that was totally opposite where we're always on the go and we come home very late and opposite schedules so we really don't see each other much right and then all yeah. of a sudden we're just together it was it was fun it was surprisingly we didn't fight a lot and i'm learning that i chose the right one like i'm i'm with the right person if we're not pulling each other's hair out but after six months of quarantine, living in one house together, seeing each other every day, 24 seven, then I'm definitely in the right path right now because I'm having a good time with her. You know, a lot of people would think that we'd be fighting and getting on each other's nerves, but we're doing great and I love it. I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that, you know, I get to be quarantined with someone that I enjoy spending time with and, and being around. Uh, isn't that super sweet, dude? <laughs> um, just how many times did you say I'm so happy that 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 really warms my heart? Like you said, just seeing each other every day, um, only being with each other. These are all things that are like that will really test your compatibility right off the bat. So 100%. So yeah, I'd say that in a way, quarantine could have been a blessing in terms of creating a strong foundation to the start of your marriage which is really cool. And based right. on the way you're talking about it, it seems like it did just that. So that that really brings joy to my heart as well. Thank you, George. G3 in the house, represent, you know how we um, do it. Um, let me explain G3, or G3 <laughs> sometimes as we say, um, is because when when JR and I first met, his name is actually, and this is this something you, you say in the public? Yeah, yeah. His name is Gaudencio. It's a great name. <laughs> it's a Gaudencio. Thank you, thank you. Gaudencio. So oh, every, all of his all of his homies here on the the side of his like of his fiance or his wife sorry I'm sorry, they call me your fiance sometimes though <laughs> um, a lot of the time they spent they spent together the the family of Jer's wife all call him Gaudi for Gaudencio yeah Gaudi Gaudi no and one ever calls me Gaudi <laughs> no one ever does except <laughs> except us and I'm one yeah. of those guys i have yep. been introduced to him I you know I mean call him Gaudi and he's Gaudencio Siliona the third. Yes. And I'm George Schultz the third. Yes. So we're both G3 or GS3. So that's GS3. Sort of like whenever we do projects together or anything, it's always just like G3. Yeah, G3. <laughs> yeah. That's the next production right there. G3. Yes. G3. And Shackleton Breath, produced by. <laughs> yeah. three. Times three. Times, times three. Next, man, like I, I wanted to go into a, a little bit about career talk. Ooh, okay. I ask and get to know a little bit about it. Um, what's the impact of this pandemic on how you personally create music and how you write, how you produce, compose? Do you do you find yourself now that you're kind of quarantined, composing and writing more, or more or less, or like what kind of pressure does that put on you to kind of have like a home studio and stuff? Like, do you do you think that because you've always kind of worked from there, has it inspired you to make more and can we expect anything new from you soon? Well, first of all, this Shackleton is strong. Oh man, we got it. I'm buzzed right now, dude. I've this what like two shots, <laughs> three shots right now. 
Uh, that's 40% ABV, man. That's your that's your standard scotch stuff. And you also put it in a hot toddy. And we're still going to be taking shots. This so is my second hot toddy. Good luck, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> we're still taking shots? Holy moly. We are taking shots. Yeah, that we're going to end the night taking shots. So You're crazy. Really? No, 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 no. Well, I mean, it'll be up to you because you can choose whether or not you want to take the shot. But if you don't take the shot, you're going to have to answer the question. And they're going to be pretty... Oh. Oh, pretty spicy, okay, okay. pretty spicy. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I think I can take a shot or two. I just got to chill back on the hot tidies. But la. so back to your question. Yes, sir. <laughs> because of the quarantine, it's been cool because I get to do music. I get to do my passion. And, you know, um, us artists, we get really, really anxious when we don't get to express our passion. And yeah. because of this quarantine, I've had so much time to be in the studio. And thank God I have my own studio at home because I can just go upstairs and start working. You know, I, we've been working on the movie, the, the score, and we just got to get Rachel up in here and do more recording. But, you know, we lined everything up already and it, it's great. You know, you just get to work on your, your passion projects. You get to work on other work. Other work is actually all online right now. And it's perfect because I got my studio, I have my audio set up, got the lights, we got the cameras, and we just shoot everything here now. And, you know, it's, it's really convenient. It's a new normal and it's something to get adjusted to. But I mean, that's what we're always doing in music. You know, we're always adjusting to the new technology or a new sound or a new look, a new, you know, there's always something changing in music and you just have to keep your eyes open to be able to adapt to it and stay relevant. I mean, and kind of with everything now, right? I mean, in general, you just have to have like this adaptable mindset moving yeah. forward. Absolutely. Um, especially in the industry you're in. And in terms of adaptability, though, I mean, I know you're the you're the king of R and B, but um, what what kind of music do you find yourself making now? I mean, would you still say you stay true to that in terms of creating R and B, or is your sound would you describe it as something else? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I've made other songs. I made rock songs, and I've made pop songs and dance electronics you know and house music but i'm always an r&b kind of guy like i'm always outputting r&b music and you know like r&b pop but you know what what's different that i uh the different genres that i do mess with is listening to jazz and classical when i listen to music i tend to kind of just throw on some classical music just just to switch it up you know because i'm always listening to r&b music I feel like when I listen to this kind of music, my musicality just transcends, elevates. I, that's that's amazing to hear. And and you know, I mean, I kind of saw a bit of that process in terms of when you when you were writing films for the movie, because I've never seen JR in his zone of writing, but you know, now that I've worked with him, just seeing him get in the zone and seeing him take inspiration and immediately create just such a versatile soundtrack. <laughs> I mean, actually of, of of we there's a lot of things to be excited about about our movie, but one of the things I'm truly excited about is just people getting to hear the soundtrack, the soundtrack oh, that you and Nico worked on. Um, it sounds magnificent. Um, Thank you. It does actually have, and some of those songs do have a bit of that R&B feel. Yeah, which, right. Which I think it's great. On that note, though, um, do you think that R&B, R&B in general still has a place in the local Philippine scene? or, or And what do you think the future of R&B is in the Philippines? Well, I think the future of R&B is on a path upwards in the Philippines right now. And the reason why I know this, the reason why I can say this is because you hear it a lot in our everyday music here in OPM, um, even in the, in the singing competitions. You know, people, when they're singing their song, whether it be a Kundiman song or an alternative song, or you know, there's always some little R&B flavor that the singer is incorporating in it right now. And I feel like because of the kind of skill, it's because when you're a singer and you kind of acquire this kind of skill, it's something that you flex and something that you do. And it's been incorporated a lot into different types of genres. So I feel like in the future, R&B and all music is just going to mash up together and just, there's not even going to be genres anymore. It's just going to, everything's going to be it's one gonna thing. Be- just, just blending in. And yeah, everything's just gonna blend. Like there won't, like I feel like the world, like year, hundreds of years down the line, won't even have race anymore. Kind of, it'll just be a melting, it'll speed. Yeah, that'll be dope, right? I guess some people could say that 
I've influenced the music industry here in the Philippines. You know, I've, that's always been a dream of mine where um, my music is that good that I'm able to in, influence the Philippine culture and, you know, mold it and, and change it. But um, yeah, ever since I came to the Philippines in 2003, I've always had this R&B sound that um, no one was really doing here. And I've always, I was always pushing it, you know, cause it's a new sound, it's original. And for some reason, people gravitated towards it, you know, when Bakit Papa launched, you know, everyone was listening to it. You know, no one was really doing that back in the day. And, yeah. and it was accepted. So kind of like I had kind of like a little um, promise to myself that, you know, I would help the R&B scene in the Philippines. And I've always tried to put out a new sound of R&B. Every time I put a new song out, I'm always experimenting with different types of sounds of where to take the next level of R&B and I love that now so many artists are taking that sound and using it and creating their own original music it's all over the radio now it's all over Spotify now and you know I'm not taking credit for it but I'm just glad to see where the music is going because you know these kids are all producing themselves and they're all writing themselves and I've always always encouraged that and it's just great to see that it's flourishing right now that's that's great to hear, man. JR, and we're going to hit our last segment now, which is drum roll, truth or drink. Ooh, so, shots? Is this the shots one that you're talking about? It is the shots one. We are nearing the end of the show, and this is the part where we play truth or drink. The mechanics are simple. I ask you a question no one else was ever drunk enough to ask. And right now, you said it yourself. You're drunk enough to answer. So, I'm pretty faded. I'm pretty faded right now. If you want to answer the question, you have to drink. If you answer the question, I will have to drink. Mm. So that's how it'll work. Of course, this is okay. designed to make you drink more than me. So good luck. We shall but see. You do answer it, man. Like um, We shall see. We shall I see. I have no shame, George. You are going to get drunk. <laughs> but of course, before we start, I want to point out to everyone, and I want to remind everyone that Shackleton and all liquor should always be enjoyed responsibly, just like JR and I are enjoying it now. And we're doing this all in good fun. Don't drink whiskey and use that as an excuse to not brush your teeth. This is not a joke, you know what I mean? But if you do, like on that night out, like a shot, you know, gargle that shot, and yeah, it should, it should clear your breath up a bit. So You're ready to talk to the ladies. Um, yeah, I mean, JRTM, that information, that's <laughs> trademark, trademark JR. Okay, all right. So, Gaudencio, I know that over the over the span of this quarantine, you've been on Kumu, you've been on different different platforms, I guess. Okay. So, like, I, I know Mika's also done her TikTok. Um, so, first question is pretty simple, and I think I'm going to get a quick shot out of you. And don't cop out by saying Mika, but... Name one secret TikTok or Instagram crush. TikTok or Instagram crush. Hmm. You That's can just take a shot. One. You don't want to answer it. That's a good it. one. No, there is one. There is one. Wow. Um, Megan Moore. Megan. <laughs> already. I thought this was like we were gonna start strong. Uh, okay. All right. That's Megan nice. Moore. She's a Playboy. Uh, Playboy bunny. Okay, I'll take a I, shot. Woo! I gulp, dude. I just took a gulp for you. <laughs> you, did, you did that for yourself, George. Oh, that was a gulp. Uh, We're drinking yeah. Shackleton here, okay? Don't act like you're not enjoying this. <laughs> I, I, I do love Shackleton, and I'm not going to take a shot of anything. But... I have a new favorite, man. This is really good stuff here. Thank you for, for having me. You know what? Um, I, 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 wanna, I love how I didn't even plan this, but I'm in the Shackleton color palette right now. Hey, you think you can give a good word? Maybe they can send me like a case of Shackleton or something like Maybe that. That'd be case. cool. All right, I will. I'll, I'll talk. I'll see if I can talk to the Shackleton bosses and see if we can send you a case. Can you see if Jerry yeah, can have a case? I'll, I'll, boss? Be doing, I'll be doing different whiskeys on the show, so maybe like in season two. Maybe we'll bring you back to try another whiskey. Hey, if I don't get too drunk on this show. Never, you never get too drunk, dude. Okay, here we go. I have a second question for okay, you. Okay, second question. Earn a shot from you from? I got no shame, George. <laughs> no shame. All right. Choose just one. What do you like better, being a capuso or capamilia? Oh, wow. Wow, George. What do you like better, dude? 
Wow, George. Take your shot. Wow, George. What? Brought out the big ones for that one, huh? You thought you'd get me on every end. <laughs> <laughs> wow, George. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm going to take a shot. Okay. <laughs> there it is. That's a win. That's a win for me. Woo! Okay, I can't so good. stalling, but all of it, stalling in truth and love. <laughs> You're so all good right. at stalling, man. Which artist would you never want to work with again? Wow. 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 We, we, get, we get there, dude. We get there. Wow. What a question. What a question. Good thing, you know, I mean, if this was um, spill your guts or fill your guts, you'd be eating gross food, but we're actually drinking a good liquid. So What like, a question, George, you mm -hmm. intelligent Good looking man, you. Oh. I'm taking a shot. If only you could smell my breath, then <laughs> you'd feel stronger about <laughs> <laughs> you'd feel stronger about my looks right now if you could just smell my breath, the Shackleton breath. All right, okay. All right. For your last question. Oh my gosh. Okay. Rank the singing abilities of these artists from best to worst. Chris Lawrence, Kyla, and Noi Volante. Damn. Wow. You're mean. <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> you are mean, George. What? I didn't want you to drink. Chris, Kyla, Noi Volante. Man, I can't rank that one, dude. Yeah, so just take the shot and say it all. <laughs> take the shot, dude. You just sly bearded guy, you. Wait, hold on. Maybe there's a way. Nope. Fine. I'm taking a shot. Okay. You boy. You had me, Mr. No Shame. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you had me. Oh, right. Shoot, I forgot about it's, I was saying that. In fairness to you, none of these things have been about shame. They've been about care and love for the people you didn't want to you didn't want to you know but but you know there isn't really a ranking to that and if i were in the same position i'd take that shot too because those are three amazing performers you oh, can't yeah. you can't rank that it would it would take a while but we have survived truth or drink and we're both alive which is good because we drank responsibly yeah our breath both smelled take? great which is good because we drank responsibly so what is this like about a third fourth a fourth of the bottle? Yeah, about a fourth of the bottle that you've gone through already. I'm glad you have a lot more to just have for a rainy day that you can just Dude. bring out and just have like a nice drink if you're feeling it at night. I'm so One of the right I always now. love the most about whiskey anyway is that you never really get a bad hangover if it's just whiskey. But JR actually on that note, um, like great guy, showed a lot of strength last year. And a last thank you again, as always, to Boozy. He's Boozy personally sent the whiskey and everything to jr and it was just so smooth jr you got it no problem right that was a got it, no problem they got came it, no twice problem. they came yeah. twice once for the shackleton second for the honey and the lemon thank you boozy you guys are dope you see you see um so thank you again to boozy guys um best place right now that you can go online to order your alcohol here in the philippines they're an amazing service i did it personally jr has now gotten it so if you're craving that one drink that you haven't been able to get on a night out, just go to boozy.com or boozy.ph and you can get it there. So thank you, Boozy. That's it, man. We that was that was beautiful. We we did our that, that was our segment for today. Um thank you for joining me for thank you. Boozy Sessions. And it was awesome. So thank you for joining me today, JR. And this has been Boozy Sessions. Again, my name is George Schultz and wishing you all good health and last Slanjivar which is like kind of old Scott for like, cheers, buddy. Wait, wait, before we go, I just want to say this is the best podcast I've ever been on, dude. What? Yes. You can't be real, dude. No, this is real talk. Actually, the, you know, I've never I'm gotten drunk on a freaking podcast before. This is, this is fun. Oh, yeah, dude, I should say it. And as much as I'd love to end it there, um, like, you know what? Let me just do this. Just anything you want to plug, like, before we go, we'll just throw that in there. Hey, everybody, make sure to follow me on Spotify. Check out J-A-Y space R, J-R, Spotify. My new music is up there, so uh, I'll see you there. Follow me. Let's go. Also, follow JR's YouTube channel and watch all of his amazing videos about how he makes certain sounds. 
so that you can get a glimpse <laughs> if you listened in of like his creative process, you can see it there. Hey, All right, JR, yeah, cheers, good. buddy. Thank you so much for joining me. Cheers. Have a good night, bro. I don't All right, know my love to Mika, my love to Mika. <laughs>